Even while just being a teenager, this boy is already a scientist, explorer, and a painter. But his talent backfires when the bad guys trick him into helping them to find the world's biggest treasure. Long ago, there lived a young boy named Leo da Vinci who was gifted with super skills. He's mostly busy inventing new gadgets or making gorgeous paintings. Leo invites his best friend Lorenzo to see his latest invention. It's a cart that can both run on the ground and fly in the air. Leo asks Lorenzo to help him in charging the engine, but Lorenzo loses his balance and drops out of the cart. Luckily, he grabs on a rope and gets back in his seat. Even after such a deadly incident, Lorenzo is willing to continue his ride. On the way, he asks Leo when he is going to confess his love to his crush, Lisa. Leo gets shy and tries to lie that he is not in love, but he keeps talking about Lisa that confirms that he is indeed head over heels in love with her. They reach the dead end, but Leo doesn't stop the cart. He wants to try jumping on the other side, but fails miserably and the cart falls. Luckily, Leo has made some safety measures. A parachute comes out and helps the cart in landing down safely. Leo assumes that Lorenzo will never join his experiment after today's incident, but Lorenzo loved the ride. He is willing to take part in all of Leo's future experiments. After putting the cart aside, they walk down to meet Lisa. They reach the fields that belong to Lisa's family. His father is a strict man, so the boys don't visit her home. They just get near the fields and make owl sounds. Lisa hears the signal and reaches there immediately. Leo invites her to see his new invention, but Lisa refuses as she is too busy. Lisa and her father are preparing for the harvest festival. Their crop is ready, and by selling it, they will earn a huge profit. It's the hard work of years. Lisa wants to make this moment perfect. The boys assure Lisa that nothing will happen. They will be back in just a few minutes and may help Lisa in the harvesting festival. Lisa eventually agrees and goes with the boys. After a bumpy ride on Leo's cart, they stop at the bank of the river. Leo asks Lorenzo to take out all the equipment from his cart. He's going to test his diving suit. It has an airtight helmet and some weights to keep him underwater. To help him breathe, Leo has connected the helmet to the pump through a long pipe. He asks Lorenzo to keep pumping air while he dives in the water. Lorenzo agrees, but he warns Leo about the rumored sea monsters that exist in the depth of water. Leo isn't afraid at all and gets in the water. He safely reaches the depth and gets mesmerized by the view. He suddenly starts to suffocate as the breathing pipe is malfunctioning. Leo drops down in pain and gets ready to die. Lorenzo notices that something is wrong and starts pumping more air. Luckily, the pipe finally unlocks and Leo gets to breathe again. He keeps exploring but only finds plants and fish. There are no sea monsters at all. Leo walks back to the surface and tells his discovery to his friends. Afterwards, they get on the cart and drive back home. As they get near to the fields, they notice a dark smoke rising to the sky. Lisa asks to drive faster. The fields have been burned down. Everything is destroyed. Lisa's father gets depressed. He has no money to pay the rent of the lands. He must have to sell his house. Hearing this, Lisa starts blaming herself for leaving the fields out of her sight. She gets angry at the boys because they insist on taking her away to test a stupid invention. She also tells Leo that she doesn't want to see his face ever again. Leo gets heartbroken and he wants to help Lisa. He or Lorenzo also don't have much savings. Leo meets his teacher, Chayako, and asks him if there's a way to earn more money. The teacher gives him the address of a famous painter who lives in Florence. As Leo is good at art, the painter may give him a job. Job. Lorenzo can also get a job in Florence. Leo decides to leave the next morning and advises Lorenzo not to tell anyone. But when Lisa asks Lorenzo, his tongue slips and he reveals the whole plan. Lisa regrets being so harsh on Leo and decides to help him. Later that night, a bunch of suspicious guys gather in the forest. They have a picture of Leo da Vinci and are planning to keep an eye on him. They also decide to keep communicating through pigeons. Lorenzo was passing by and heard the suspicious guys. He wants to save his friend, but the bad guys find him. They kidnap Lorenzo and force him to write a fake note. Lisa finds the note on Lorenzo's doorstep and assumes that Lorenzo refused to join them because of an urgent piece of work. Leo and Lisa head to Florence by themselves and look for the painter. They ask a local who tells them the painter is out of town for a few days. However, they can find more painters in the market. Leo and Lisa walk around the market, but find the people there quite strange. Everyone is running after food and money. They also witness a little girl stealing an apple, which breaks Lisa's heart. They suddenly hear an announcement and head to see a puppet show. The presenter is telling an ancient story of the sea. It all started in a distant country on an island that is located in the Great Indian Sea. A ship had started sailing in that deep and quiet sea, but the water held a dark secret. It was of deadly sea monsters. The ship passed by several monsters, scary pirates, and killer corsairs. Moreover, the fierce winds also tried to stop that mysterious ship. It held something so valuable that no one could ever imagine. A giant treasure. After getting destroyed, the ship landed on the seabed right under the stars of Sirius, 
and Procyon. The presenter has the map to find that treasure ship and asks if anyone is interested in buying it. Leo believes it's a great chance to solve all of their financial problems. He doesn't have money for the map, so he offers his best painting to the storyteller. Surprisingly, the storyteller gives him the map for free and acts a little suspicious, but Leo doesn't care. He wants to focus on finding the treasure. Suddenly, the little thief girl from earlier jumps there and steals the map. Leo runs after her, but she is more skilled than she seems. She jumps over the building like a ninja and gives Leo a tough time. Meanwhile, Lisa meets a cute little boy named Niccolo, who gives her a telescope to get a better view of where Leo is going. Leo finally catches the little girl, but she refuses to give the map until Leo agrees to take her along to find the treasure. Leo agrees and gets back the map. He returns to Lisa, and they make preparations to head out the next morning. Leo is also introduced to Niccolo, who loves studying and observing stars. Leo believes that the kid will be helpful in finding the location of Sirius and Procyon, so he lets Niccolo join the mission. The thief girl also reaches there, but Leo refuses to let her stay. The girl introduces herself as Agnes. She has lost her family and lives on the streets. She doesn't even have any friends. Agnes wants to join this mission because she wants to do something big and memorable in her life. She also wants to make new friends and have a better life. Lisa and Niccolo feel really sorry for the little girl and begs Leo to let her join the mission as well. Leo starts the cart and they head towards the sea. Leo pulls out the wings and makes the cart go faster and faster. They reach the sea and Leo turns his cart into a boat. They keep sailing for hours until it gets dark. Leo and his friends stop at a cave to test for the night. According to the map, they have reached near the location of the treasure. Leo wants to continue the journey in the early morning, but Niccolo warns him of the upcoming solar eclipse. He explains how a solar eclipse is, but none of his friends are interested in hearing that, and they go away to sleep. Meanwhile, the bad guys are still spying on Leo. They belong to a pirate ship and inform all the details to their boss. The boss orders them to keep following Leo so they can steal the treasure he finds. Lorenzo is still stuck and tied up in a random boat. Luckily, a rat bites off the ropes and Lorenzo is free. As he gets out of the mystery room, he finds himself in a boat that is owned by teacher Chayako. Lorenzo tells him that Leo is in danger and Chayako agrees to help. The next morning, Leo stares at the sea to look for a clue. Suddenly, he notices something and rushes to the seashore. It's a dolphin trapped in a fishnet. Leo helps the dolphin, and in exchange, the dolphin brings him an ancient necklace. This is proof that the treasure ship is nearby. Leo puts on his diving suit and gets under the water. There he finds the wrecked ship, but there isn't any treasure. As he turns back to return, a group of sharks block his way. Leo doesn't get scared and uses his mind. He puts his air pipe in the mouth of one of the sharks. The shark gets inflated with air and flies around like a balloon. The other sharks get scared and run away. Leo gets out of the water and tells his friends that there isn't any treasure. It seems like the treasure ship was attacked by the pirate ship, which took away the treasure. God knows where the treasure went after that. The spying pirates hear this information and deliver it to their boss. The boss orders them to dive back in water and check the ship by themselves. The pirates try making a diving suit, but fail miserably. As they get in the water, a bunch of sharks attack them from all sides. Leo and his friends also witness the incident and understand that the pirates are continuously spying on them. They must find the treasure and run away soon. Unfortunately, they must wait until the rain stops. Niccolo loves rain, so he volunteers to go and check if their boat is alright. Agnes joins him while Leo and Lisa stay behind. As the sun starts shining again, Leo happily informs Lisa, but she seems really sad. Lisa tells Leo that her father is under great financial pressure. To save their house, they have only one option. Lisa has to get married to the landlord's son. Lisa doesn't like him at all and begs Leo to help her. Angus hears everything and feels really sorry for her. She goes to Niccolo and tells him they should give their best to find the treasure. It's not just about money, it's about Lisa's happiness. After a while, the pirate ship reaches there. Leo believes that the pirates must have some valuable information. As the night gets darker, Leo and Lisa sneak into the pirate ship and investigate it for clues. The finds pigeons and some notes that proves that the pirates were following them for a long time. But Leo still wonders how they knew that a village boy like him was capable of finding the treasure. Suddenly, the boss reaches there, so Leo and Lisa hide behind the chair. When the boss gets distracted by a rat, Leo and Lisa jump out of the ship and reach the seashore. All night, Leo keeps thinking harder and harder. He suddenly remembers that the broken parts he found under the sea seem to belong to more than one ship. It means that the pirate ship that took away the treasure also wrecked nearby. He must dive in again to find it. Meanwhile, Niccolo and Angus plan to steal some gems from the pirates and get to their ship. Unfortunately, the pirates capture them and ask their identity. Niccolo claims to be a wizard that can make the sun disappear. Unfortunately, his calculations about the occurrence of solar eclipse aren't right, and his plan to scare the pirates fails. On the other side, Leo gets in the water and swims to the other side of the waterfall. There he finds the lost treasure ship. He calls Lisa and together they investigate the ship. They find the treasure trunk and carry it outside. 
The pirates spot them and snatch away the treasure, but they don't know how to open the trunk. Leo offers to help them, but they must let his friends go. The pirates agree, and Leo asks them to hang the trunk over the water. Then he uses bait to call the dolphins. The trunk is supposed to be open with the sound of dolphins. Once it is opened, Leo cuts off the rope and takes the treasure on his boat. The pirates start shooting him with cannons, but Leo doesn't give up and throws all the treasure in the sea. His boat is totally destroyed, and he gets drowned in water. Lisa starts to cry on his death, but Leo suddenly appears again. He is saved by his dolphin friend. He flies with his artificial wings and takes away his friend. The pirates try to shoot at him, but damage their own boat. They sink in the water while Leo and his friends are saved by Chayako who teaches there on his boat along with Lorenzo. Leo is really happy to see them and tells them that he cleverly hid a little treasure to help Lisa. Hearing this, Chaiko reveals his true identity. He is the actual boss of the pirates. He knew that Leo could find the treasure. That's why he tricked him into going on this mission. He was the one who burned the fields and sent the storyteller to make his plan work. Leo gets angry and faces Chaiko bravely. Besides being a scientist and a painter, Leo is great at fighting too. He defeats Chaiko and his pirates and returns to his village. He pays the landlord with the gold he brought and saves Lisa. Niccolo returns home while Angus is taken in by Lisa's family. Leo still can't gather courage to confess his love for Lisa, but she has realized it already and gives him a kiss. They didn't get all the treasure, but it's still a happily ever after. Sometimes you don't need to find a treasure to be happy. Finding the right person to love is no less than a treasure.